You're listening to the DolphinsTalk.com Podcast Network. You're listening to the Dolphins Talk Fan Series. Introducing you to some of the Miami Dolphins' biggest fans. If you'd like to nominate a fan to appear on the show, shoot us an email at dolphinstalk1977 at gmail.com or send us a message on Twitter at Dolphins Talk. And now, here's today's episode of the Dolphins Talk Fan Series. Hello, 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 Miami Dolphin fans. I'm Josh Kotzker, co-host of the same old Dolphin show from right here at DolphinsTalk.com. And welcome to the Dolphins Talk fan series. The Miami Dolphins have one of the widest and most diverse fan bases in the entire NFL. They have fans in all 50 states and in countries all around the world. Because of that, because of how big that fan base is, we decided to start this new podcast series to help you, our listeners and viewers, get to know some of those fans a little bit better. Some of the fans that we're going to talk to are people you already know very well, and some of them will be people that you meet for the very first time. And we're going to get to our guest today in just a moment. But first, a reminder to make sure that you are visiting DolphinsTalk.com each and every day for all of our great content, including columns, analysis, and all of our podcasts. Additionally, you want to make sure that you're subscribed to the DolphinsTalk.com daily podcast wherever you get podcasts. Make sure you're subscribing or following on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you are subscribed. And if you can, if you've got a few moments, leave us a rating, leave us a review. It helps us out a great deal. Also, make sure you are subscribed to the Dolphins Talk YouTube channel as we've got lots of new content coming your way, including live streams of the Dolphins Talk podcast, the same old Dolphin show. We also have new highlights, analysis, Fins Talk today with Bobby Melendez, all kinds of great stuff coming your way. So make sure you head to YouTube, smash the subscribe button on the Dolphins Talk YouTube channel, then head over to Twitter. And give me a follow at Amplified to Rock and uh, follow at Dolphins Talk. That's Mike. And you will never miss a thing. I also want to let you know that the flowers are blooming, the grass is growing, and it's time to mow your lawn. Thanks to our sponsor, Manscaped, you can trim the hedges below the belt safely and efficiently. I'm talking about ball trimmers, guys. Ball trimmers. Manscaped, the global leaders in men's below the waist grooming, have an exclusive offer for our audience. If you go to manscaped.com, you can use the promo code Dolphins Talk. You will get 20% off of your order, no matter what you order, no matter how much, no matter how little, you get 20% off and free shipping. That promo code again is Dolphins Talk. Join the two other the the not the two other the other two million men who trusted manscape they're here to make sure your balls are smooth and smelling nice after all it is time for some spring cleaning so get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code dolphins talk at manscape.com that's 20 percent off and free shipping with the code dolphins talk at manscaped.com it's spring cleaning baby and your balls well, thank you. Our guest today was a contributor to Locked On Dolphins and the Finalysis podcast with Travis Wingfield. And he is now a contributor right here at DolphinsTalk.com. He's a great all around football analyst. I'm very excited for you to meet the man behind Dolphins Talk Weekly. Here is Kevin Dern. Hi, Kevin. Hey, Josh. How are you, man? I am great. I am great. Thank you so much for hopping on and doing an episode of the Dolphins Talk Fan Series with us. Yeah, no problem. This is awesome. Thanks for uh, reaching out and having me on tonight. 
No problem whatsoever. I mean, you are a member of the Dolphins Talk family with your new hit yes. show, Dolphins Talk Weekly. And I just figured, you know, a lot of people are used to hearing you break down the X's and O's and, <laughs> and talk about the the ins and outs of how things work with the Miami Dolphins, but they don't maybe haven't had an opportunity to like get to know the man behind the voice that they hear on the show each week. And so what better opportunity to introduce you to the people than to bring you on to the fan series. Yeah, exactly. This will be fun. So excited to, to share some of my story. Excellent. Well, let's start out at the, at the very beginning, I guess. Where, where are you from and what do you do when you're not breaking down the Dolphins? Sure. Um, well, right now I live in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, which if you look at the map where Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky all come together, we are right there in the corner. But I am originally from Cincinnati, Ohio. So only about 20 minutes away from downtown Cincinnati right now. When I'm not doing this, uh, my wife and I have a uh, 13-month-old daughter. So chasing her around, almost walking. So doing that. And then um, I actually work at a COVID research lab right now. So a little bit of a, a different line of work. But that's my, my day job. And then love breaking down the X's and O's in my spare time. Um, I like to golf, bowling. Uh, those are my other two hobbies. So, yeah, hopefully. Absolutely. Well, I imagine lots of good golfing down there in that part of the world where you're at in uh, southern Indiana, sort of southwestern Ohio. Mm-hmm. A lot of a lot of good golfing in that area. Yeah, a lot of nice courses. Haven't made it out yet this year, but uh, hoping not not this weekend. We've got some family stuff going on, but hopefully next weekend, be able to get the uh, sticks out. Soon. It's it's still yeah. that time of year as we're recording this where it's at least where I am, it's where you get the really nice couple of days where the weather is beautiful, the sun is shining, the weather is warm, but then two days later it's raining and snowing and it's still it's it hasn't quite made up its mind to fully become whatever season it's gonna be. It wants to Oh yeah. Yeah. You're in that same, transition period. Yeah, same here. It was sixty three today and I know we've got a chance of snow on Wednesday. So Oh. That's how it gets. Beautiful. <laughs> Got, gotta love spring. Gotta love springtime. Yeah. Uh, so how, being from the Cincinnati area, how did you become mm-hmm. a fan of the Miami Dolphins and not a fan of the, the great Cincinnati Bengals? Uh, well, a couple of reasons. So when I first started getting into football, the Bengals were awful. That was right around when they drafted like Big Daddy Dan Wilkinson, Kajana Carter, the rest of oh. my family, my, the rest of my family are all Bengals fans. But I remember growing up, my dad would fall asleep ten minutes into the game, and they'd be down, you know, fourteen nothing. So my brother and I would change the channel and watch, you know, the game on the other network, which was Fox back then. Um, and we just never really liked the Bengals growing up, which is kind of funny because I ended up working for a former Cincinnati Bengal later in life. But um, in second grade, my mom bought me a Dallas Cowboys starter winter coat. And all the kids in my class liked the Dallas Cowboys. I didn't really know much about football. I knew who the Cowboys were. I knew they were good. And the very first game I ever watched was at my grandparents' house was the 1993 Thanksgiving game with Leon Lett. Oh, yes. So I was like, oh, the Dolphins must be awesome. They beat the Cowboys. and I had, <laughs> And I had no, like idea or concept of who Dan Marino was because he was already hurt at that point. And then a couple weeks after that game, they played on Monday night football against the Chargers and we were on a uh, Christmas break. So it was the first time my dad ever let me stay up and watch Monday night football. So I remember those two things about the Dolphins and then our school library, for whatever reason, I forget who the author was, but they had this series of books and it was like Super Bowls one through 25 and I must have read like each of those three times. So I actually knew about like the Killer Bees, the No Name Defense, Bob Greasy, Larry Zonka. Knew about all those guys before I had any idea about Dan Marino. And then the next year, that fall, we were at my grandparents' house again and we watched the Dolphins Patriots game when he had that shootout with Drew Bledsoe. And I remember my dad got the Sports Illustrated article in the mail the next week and I snatched the cover off of it and put that on my wall and was a Dolphins fan for life ever since. That's amazing. Talk about so, a couple of signature Miami Dolphins moments mm-hmm. from the mid nineties. That's, that's it right there. And well, I mean, easy to see how you got hooked <laughs> on that. That's, yeah, I yeah. mean, those are, those are classic moments. Awesome. Um, so what, 
so we talked about that. That's kind of your earliest memories of the Miami Dolphins. But who was your favorite all-time Miami Dolphins player? Let's do this. Let's answer this twice. Let's say okay. your favorite Dolphin player ever and okay. your favorite current Miami Dolphin player. Favorite ever would probably be a tie between Dan Marino and then I loved Sam Madison. So when I started playing football, I was a skinny little kid. Not now. Need to need to hit the gym a little bit. But uh, when I started playing, I was at right corner, which is what Sam Madison mostly played. So those two were my favorite ever. Favorite Dolphin right now? Oh, man. Um, I probably have to stick with corner and go with Xavier Howard. Uh, I just really like his game. Obviously, he had a tremendous season last year and... You know, I'm, I'm a defensive guy, so he, he really kind of makes the defense click. So that's why he's my favorite. But uh, um, I did get the chance to meet Coach Flores uh, two years ago uh, in 2019, and he is awesome. So if I could pick a coach as well, I would say Coach Flores is, is the man and really excited for, for what the draft has to come and, and this season has to bring. Absolutely. And let's talk about that a little bit right now. Let's talk mm-hmm. about how you feel about these Dolphins. I mean, we, you uh, anybody that's listened to your podcast knows that, you know, you, you've been sort of breaking down the X's and O's this whole offseason. But how are you really feeling as a fan as we head into the 2021 draft and the season beyond that? Yeah, um, I guess I, I think I think it was Dougley Durong said this on your very first episode where. It's like, okay, we went 10 and 6. I don't know if many people expected that. You know, I kind of thought 8 and 8, 9 and 7 would have been a good benchmark, you know, maybe overachieving last year. So to go 10 and 6, to be in the playoff hunt, I think was a huge step. And I guess in my head, I kind of view this year as kind of like year two. Like 2019 was a throwaway year, in my opinion, because they did all the rebuilding, traded everybody, got rid of all the veterans and stuff. So I think it's it's time to see that jump. I think the team is – I think defensively they're very close to being elite. And I think with some some good drafting, they can really get the offensive side of the ball to kind of, you know, catch back up a little bit. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to see where this team goes. And I think they should be in the playoffs this year. That's my, my realistic expectation for them. I think so, too. I think there's a really good chance that that offense is going to take a couple big steps forward. I think – my the, the the sort of cynic in me says, let's hope that offense can take a couple of big steps forward to catch up with the defense and that the defense doesn't take too much of a step backwards this yes. year because I mm-hmm. feel like I feel like that that defense really got to a, a really great place last season and and maybe I, I think naturally you might expect them to take at least a little bit of a step backwards this year. Hopefully I'm mm-hmm. wrong. Hopefully they produce yeah. just as much <laughs> as they did last year and then great we're cruising but yeah yeah i think everybody a lot of people seem to be in that optimistic place about this team right now um going back to some more of that historical stuff do you have a favorite miami dolphins game or moment like one specific moment that you remember Mm -hmm. above the rest that is like you're just your favorite moment of being a dolphins fan i've got two if i can do if i can give you two uh, so, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Okay. Typically, I like to nail everybody down to one, but I'll, right. I'll let okay. this slide. So I'll say my favorite game of all time was, I think it was 2002 at Denver on Sunday night when they came back and beat the Broncos in the last second. That was the best hard-hitting Miami Dolphins game I've ever seen. Unfortunately, Ray Lucas happened thereafter. Um, we know the rest of that story. Yeah. And then, oddly enough, my my favorite like Dolphins fan memory was the Monday night game in 2004 when they upset the Patriots wearing the orange jerseys. So, and the reason for that is is um, I'd been out kind of partying with my friends all Sunday night. We were still on holiday break. Woke up, my buddy was like, "Hey, do you want to come over and play poker?" I'm like, "Oh god, okay, sure, I'll be over there." <laughs> So, like, there's, like, 12 of us playing poker. I am not a good poker player by any means, but I actually finished in the top three and got some money out of it. So I was like, okay, this isn't bad. And I had co- totally lost track of time because we were playing down in his basement and, you know, cell phones weren't a huge thing. We had them, but, you know, not like now. And I realized, oh, crap, I got to go home. Like, the game starts in, like, 45 minutes. And then they upset the Patriots. So that was just a fun day hanging out with my friends. And then they got that that really cool upset of the Patriots when they went on to win the Super Bowl. So... That was always a fun memory for me. 
Yeah, well, I mean, pairing, winning, doing pretty well at a poker game with a Dolphins victory. Yeah. I mean, that is a solid, solid evening. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you had the opportunity to see the Dolphins live? Yes. Um, I've seen them probably getting close to 20 or 25 times live. Oh, um, okay, great. I've only been down to Miami twice. Uh, I saw them once in 2010. It was on Sunday night against the Jets, and that was the game that it was right after LeBron James had signed, so they introduced him after the first quarter. And I think we were down 14 to nothing, so that was the loudest cheer we had in like the whole first <laughs> half. And then um, I got to go down in 2019, and um, I'm pretty good friends with Travis Wingfield, who you guys probably all know works for the team now. Um, he got me credentialed for that game, so I got to cover it as a member of the media, and we got to go – meet coach flores we got to go in the locker room we got to go to coach flow's media presser um that's when they beat the Bengals. so the last home game of 2019 um got to see him there and i've seen him a bunch of places i've seen him play um i saw him upset the packers at lambeau field the year green bay won the super bowl i've been to a game in detroit um soldier field i've been to see them play cincinnati like five times now i actually went to a jets game at the old meadowlands um don't know that I'd ever do that experience again, uh, but <laughs> made it made it out safely. Um, there was a Dolphins fan on the escalator, about ten people in front of us leaving, who did not make it out safely. Um, so that was an eye-opening experience for me. But uh, yeah, I've seen him probably probably getting close to twenty-five times live now. That's great. And do you have of those times? What is your favorite experience watching the Dolphins live? Uh, probably that game in New York because that was the game where Ted Ginn ran back the two kickoffs. Ah, uh, so yes. So just to to hear how silent that stadium got like after that, and then walking out like um one of my really good buddies is a huge Jets fan, so we're friends, three hundred and sixty three days a year, and he took me to the game, and I remember afterwards they were grilling out steaks, and his dad just came up to me and he's like. Well, Kevin, you don't get one. So, <laughs> I was like, okay, that's fair. So, and they really didn't give me any food. I had to like steal a bag of chips from another tailgate. <laughs> but Man, uh, those Jets fun. fans don't mess yeah. around. Yeah, got the got a nice win out of it, so I'll, I'll take that over over the stake. Yeah, oh, every t- every time I would say, that's yeah. fantastic. I love that. Um, all right. Well, then, last question about the Dolphins, and then we'll get off the rails a little bit here. Okay. Who is the Dolphins opponent that you dislike the most? Buffalo. No Not, hesitation, no hesitation yeah, at all. Buffalo. Um, I just remember those battles in the 90s. Like they were always competing with Miami for the AFC East. And I just remember like the battle with Bruce Smith and Richmond Webb, Dan Marino, Jim Kelly. Like, and it, it always seemed like the Bills were always just kind of like a step ahead. And, you know, obviously they had a pretty rough stretch from you know 99 up until a couple years ago now that the rivalry's back um it's pretty fun and then i actually went to the university of dayton and for whatever reason there's like a decent contingent of people from buffalo that come to ud so buffalo and the east coast was kind of a weird contingent but just met a lot of bills fans at ud and it's always kind of fun just to to go back and forth especially now that the rivalry's heating back up i guess miami's got to get a win to to heat it back up but yeah that's you know. that's the next yeah. step in that yeah. puzzle mm-hmm. well isn't ud and ub aren't they in the same conference they both um, a10 no buffalo is in the mac but uh ah. i know we've played it at buffalo for some of the tournament games it's always like a regional site so gotcha see all the all the mid-major mm-hmm. conferences they're yeah. all they all meld <laughs> together anyway we'll talk yeah. more about that on our college basketball podcast <laughs> um <laughs> but uh let's go a little off the rails here so listen Ke- kevin when you're not golfing and you're not bowling and you're not writing about the dolphins or podcasting about the dolphins or watching the dolphins what mm-hmm. what do you really enjoy doing uh, trying to catch up on some TV shows, having my daughter and a wife who works full time as well. I don't get to watch as much sure. as I would like. So, uh, right now just kind of binging through Peaky Blinders. Um, okay. that's probably my go-to show. Um, love the Sons of Anarchy series and watching Mayans, the, the spinoff right now. Um, aside from that, you know, we usually like to hang out with, uh, my wife's family lives really close by. So, um. She's got two brothers, so we usually hang out. Um, 
you know, other than that, just playing with our dog, we've got a 75 pound pit lab mix that, you know, has an energizer, uh, bunny battery attached to her. Uh-huh. So she goes and walk her every day. Um, you know, one of those dogs that doesn't realize how big she is. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And if I weren't sitting in this chair, if I were on a couch, you would see her in the screen right now. Cause <laughs> she's right down here. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. I love that. Well, uh, Let's do a recommendation here. First of all, let me say I commiserate with I, I've got my daughter is also 13 months old. She was born mm-hmm. uh, March 1st. And uh, yeah, I there's a lot of chasing around going on right now. Um, luckily, right now, she is just she's a magnet to her older brother. Okay. who's four. Yeah. So, you know, you put them in the room together. You're not going to have to chase her too far because you're going to find her next to her brother <laughs> who is you know not always into it we'll see yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you uh, yeah. had to give the listeners and the viewers one recommendation whether it's a music recommendation a movie recommendation a podcast or tv recommendation or Ooh, like a book recommendation okay. what would your one okay. recommendation be for the listeners wow okay um well i am kind of a, a history nerd so okay. i'm actually going to go with a book i read about three, four months ago. It's called Say Nothing by Patrick Radden Keefe. And it's about the troubles in Northern Ireland back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Um, if you've been following recent events, I think there was like a bus bombing or something last week in Northern Ireland. This all is related to that. And it, it was a fantastic book. I, I knew what it was, didn't know much about it. And it just kind of makes you feel like you're in it living it um strangely enough it actually has a weird tie-in to boston college university where coach Flo went so um it was a really good book and uh patrick radden keith anything he's done is is really well written uh check out his work so that's my my recommendation say nothing was the i love name it of the book that's a great one that is a great recommendation all right kevin it's time to get your plugs in so where can everybody uh find you and you know read what you're writing and listen to what you're talking about where can they find you yeah yeah so um i try and post as many things as i can on twitter the twitter handle is right there kevin md4 um i write for dolphinstalk.com i do the dolphins talk weekly podcast also for them um usually try and have an episode out every friday or saturday uh, just a once a week thing and then currently working on a big article kind of reviewing the dolphins offensive We'll call it acquisitions from this this off season. Hoping to get that post in the next three four days. Just trying to to go through and get all the cut ups. But uh, give me a follow on Twitter if you ever have any questions. I try and answer as many of them as I can. So Kevin MD four. That's my that's my official plug. Excellent. Well, Kevin, thank you for coming on and doing the Dolphins yeah. Talk fan series. We appreciate it. It was a lot of fun chatting with you. And, uh, you know, we'll have to uh, we'll have to stay tuned to see what you – we're looking forward to that next article that you're dropping. And, of course, as you said, Dolphins Talk Weekly is the place to, to listen to him every week here on the website. So, uh, Kevin, thanks again for doing this, and we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, sounds great. Thanks for having me, Josh. Yeah, you got it, man.